Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're touring the Jean Isley Memorial Gardens at Isley Nursery. And here we have the beautiful Picea Pungens Procumbens. So as you can see, there's a lot of weeping going on, a lot of sprawling branches, and some of these are trying to create uh, some central leaders, so you'd want to actually prune these back to keep the uh, mounding spreading going on. But beautiful blue color, or blue-gray color, I should say, and uh, creates a real nice interest in the garden because of the both texture, color, um, and you just really never know, know what you're going to get with this plant. So, so next to the sprawling blue spruce, we have Pinus Mugo Valley Cushion. Um, obviously, you can see how symmetrical this plant is. Um, they're pretty bulletproof in the landscape, so you want to provide good drain, good drainage, um, no matter where you put it. So, as you can see here, it's up in a mounding bed here in the northwest, so it's going to get plenty of drainage that way. So, there's your spring buds starting to swell just a little bit. But great foundation plant or a filler plant in pretty much any garden. Okay, staying in the same bed, you can see another Picea pungens procumbens, some spring daffodils, a uh, weeping Japanese maple, and we're going to focus here, in here on the uh, Cryptomeria japonica golden promise. Another beautiful symmetrical plant. Um, being that this garden is more of a display garden, uh, it is absolutely a gorgeous garden, but I probably wouldn't have planted this right next to the uh, Mugo Pine, the Valley Cushion, just because they're too similar in size and shape. And for this type of garden, it's better to have you know more contrast going on instead of two plants that look very similar right next to each other like that. Um, and I'll pull out a few things like that just for your guys' interest. Um, plus the rock right there, you got a little bit of a glimpse of it. It's kind of the same shape too. So you've got three things very tightly placed together um, in similar shape. But beautiful plant, um, beautiful year-round color as well. So now we're looking at the back side of that bed. And we're going to focus in on another Mugo Pine. So this one is Pinus Mugo Mitch Mini. So it's a little bit, a little bit tighter growth compared to the Valley Cushion. And if you notice the rock before, it kind of has the same shape and you've got the moss growing on it. So kind of the same scenario I was talking about last plant with the cryptomeria. Um, I don't personally like that they look so similar and planted so close to each other, but again, this is a display garden and, you know, some of the design concepts aren't fully there, but, you know, they're just trying to get all their plants displayed and still beautiful and just trying to give you guys an idea of what these plants will look like. A little bit more established. So Pinus Mugo Mitch Mini. Right. 
So here's another great symmetrical conical shaped conifer called Cyadopitus verticillata grun kugel. And one thing you need to consider is the video this time of year. So we're talking mid March. Uh, this is about the worst the conifers look because you're waiting for the spring flush. So, you know, these older needles have been for a full growing season. So you can see how beautiful it still is, even with a little bit of burnt tips. You'll have to excuse the birds in the background. We have three macaws that like to compete with my voice. So anyway, hope you like birds. Up next is one of my all-time favorite plants. This is Suga canadensis, Coles prostrate. It's also one of our top-selling plants at Kigi Nursery. Um, great dwarf variety of Canadian hemlock. And the fact that it weeps and kind of crawls and does its own thing. It's really nice next to a pond or a bunch of rocks. You know, like a rock wall or just in the middle of a garden bed is great too. So anyway, it's like I say, it's more dwarf in size, so it'll fit in about any landscape. In warmer climates, you definitely want to give it some shade and heavy mulch, but great, great plant for just about anywhere in the U.S. So again, that's Suga canadensis Coles prostrate. So here's another one of our favorites here at Kigi Nursery. It's uh, Picea orientalis firefly. This is the smaller version of Picea orientalis skylands. Uh, both plants, absolutely gorgeous. So very symmetrical, like you can see, cone-shaped. But all the tips are yellow. And then you get the older growth, shaded growth will turn more green. So wonderful contrast there. This cultivar can also be pruned if you didn't want it to get as tall as it is here. Um, it'll just make the growth more dense and contained in a smaller landscape, but gorgeous, gorgeous plant. Next plant on our tour is Capressus Arizonica Raywoods Weeping. Now this one is kind of a monster. Um, you definitely need some space for it and it will spread wherever it wants to go. 
So pruning and training through manipulating branches with um, stakes and ties, things like that. You can create some really cool whimsical things out of this plant, but definitely give it some space and be creative with it, but it's a gorgeous color. Another great hemlock, Suga mertensiana elizabeth. So this is the mountain hemlock, which, you know, natively the Suga mertensiana grows higher elevations. So it's a little bit slower growing than other hemlocks. Um, you know, give this one some shade, definitely in the afternoon, heavy mulch, but just a gorgeous plant. Here we have Thuya occidentalis primo. This is a Isley Nursery exclusive that we sell at Kiki Nursery. So really slow glow growing. This is actually the biggest specimen I have seen of this plant. Um, just kind of takes its own character and bonsai-esque, I would say, without any pruning. But just gorgeous, gorgeous plant, and like other thuyas, it's you know winter color changes from summer. So to fit this one in bad any space because it grows tall and narrow and slow. So yeah, give this one a try. Thuya occidentalis primo.
next we have a hybrid spruce. So this is Picea pungens cross glauca. So it is a cross between a Colorado spruce and a white spruce. One nice thing about this garden is that, you know, Isley Nursery can use it to observe plants. So this is what they're doing with this plant here is just seeing how it grows, what it does, if it's landscape worthy. So it's a pretty nice looking plant. So it'll be interesting to see if they offer it for sale or not. Once again, Picea pungens cross glauca, hybrid spruce. Next up, we have a gorgeous blue spruce by the name Picea pungens, pungens nemitz. You know, it just looks like a standard blue spruce, but in the spring, the spring flush is just a gorgeous, gorgeous white yellow. And I will include a link to some other video that we have of the actual spring growth so but this is a good picture of what it looks like you know through the winter months just looks like your standard blue spruce nice color but it's really known for its spring flush and I want to say that flush lasts for probably about three to four weeks and then it just kind of fades to a lime green and then eventually you get the blue out of it so really nice plant um, We've even sculptured some into different shapes and really cool. So yeah, give this one a try. Picea pungens nemitz. Here we have Juniperus communis miniature and miniature is the cultivar name not just a description but anyway that one is very similar to Juniperus communis compressa compressa grows a little more vertical and narrow so this one's a little more squatty slower growing and you can see from the specimen, it kind of gets a windswept look to it, both with it growing a little bit sideways and the foliage coming, kind of spiraling through it a little bit. Another thing I want you to notice with this one is how it looks next to a rock with moss on it. I talked earlier in the video about, you know, planting plants that look similar to the boulders and you kind of get lost you know just is it a rock is it a plant visually it just doesn't look right but this is a little bit better example of how it does look right where you've got a more vertical plant with you know a squatty boulder And here we have Pinus contorta, which is broom. So 
with the witch's broom, this is a little sport that was found off of Pinus Contorta Taylor Sunburst. So this is also being watched in the Isley Garden here. Be interesting to see what it does, if it's a dwarf little thing or if it gets, you know, half the size of the Taylor Sunburst or the flushed out color with the uh, Taylor Sunburst, it comes out white when it flushes in the spring. So if it does the same thing, just more dwarf form. So kind of fun to see what it'll do. And hopefully I'll be there to get some video of it. And one can never have too many Mugo Pines. Here's Pinus Mugo Sherwood Compact. Another nice, tightly branched dwarf cultivar that has good structure. And here we have a nice dwarf form of Japanese white pine, Pinus parviflora, Catherine Elizabeth. When young, the foliage clumps and mounds, creating a unique little sculpture. With age, Catherine Elizabeth will begin to spread, creating a wider than tall, dense cloud, like you're seeing here, of light blue to green short needle foliage. Performs best in full sun, well-drained soil, and I would recommend removing the dead foliage that collects amongst the inner branches, just to give it just to give it more air and just makes it look nicer. So yeah, Catherine Elizabeth, dwarf Japanese white pine. Coming up next is a beautiful dwarf Colorado blue spruce, Picea pungens zafiro. It's another uh, Isley exclusive. So kind of similar to the generic Picea pungens globosa. Uh, a little bit slower growth. And some say it's a little bluer, so we really enjoy this cultivar.
And here's another tiny little treasure. Pinus parviflora. And it's not a named cultivar yet. It's a seedling off of Kinpo. So this is another one being watched in the Isley Garden to see what it will do. But obviously it's a nice, tight little ball of wonderfulness. So this is the dwarf Japanese white pine, Pinus parviflora. Like I say, it's not a named cultivar yet. It's a Kinpo seedling. Next is a miniature little ball of wonderfulness, Picea abes bruno, and I have not yet seen this one available on the market. I don't know where it came from, but as soon as it's propagated and available, we hope to offer them at Kigi Nursery. So yeah, look at all those buds. That thing is just a tight little wonderful thing. So. That is a miniature Norway spruce, Picea abes bruno. And here's a very slow growing form of jack pine, Pinus banksiana schneverdingen. So this will grow to kind of a flat bun shape, but real nice slow growing jack pine. Keeping with the nice dwarf theme, here's a Pinus Sembra to Manger, a dwarf Swiss stone pine. And here's another Swiss stone pine, Pinus sembra, Ortler WB. So when you see the WB on the tag, that means witch's broom. And witch's brooms come about from genetic mutations found on either, you know, the parent plant or other cultivars. So when you find a genetic little mass, um, 
you know, you cut that off and propagate it out and you get a witch's broom. And so once again, it's being observed here in the garden to see if it's going to be something that's garden worthy or bonsai worthy or just worthy in general. And if it is, it'll be named its own cultivar name instead of being the Ortler WB. So look forward to see what this one does as well. And here's a compact mounted Japanese red pine. Nice deep green foliage. Pinus densiflora edsel wood. Here's a beautiful trio of Juniperus communis compressa. So earlier we showed you the Juniperus communis um, miniature. This is the compressa cultivar. And you can notice how much more narrow it is. And <clears throat> I personally like this cultivar better than the miniature, but each of them could have their place in different garden situations. But this one seems to grow more vertical. Um, even each branch will be more vertical instead of more swirling like the uh, miniature version was. So visually, I just like this, this uh, cultivar a little better. But Juniperus communis compressa. So this is a nice dwarf common juniper. So we just showed you a trio of the common juniper, Compressa. Now we're going to show you a mass planting of Picea Glauca Pixie Dust. So kind of similar to Picea Glauca Conica, which is widely available at every home improvement store across the USA. Pixie Dust is much slower growing more in the miniature category and the second flush of growth so early summer growth will be yellow tipped so it's kind of a surprise to a lot of gardeners when they see this that time of year for that color of growth and it's a beautiful contrast between the yellow tips and the uh, dark green older growth so definitely Give this one a try in your garden, and pretty much anybody should have space for it because it's a tiny little thing. So, Picea glauca pixie dust.
And we will end our video today with a, another dwarf Japanese white pine, Pinus parviflora kokuho. I want to thank everybody for watching today. And if you enjoy our content, please subscribe to our channel. This helps bring us or bring you more content. So like it, comment on it, subscribe to it. All these things help in our uh, rankings. So thanks and happy gardening.